welcome my dear students to the session of general pathology doubts we'll start the session so the first question caspase involved in extrinsic pathway in human being okay what are caspases they are proteases okay they are proteases in the cell usually they are inactive okay when they are activated they induce apoptosis what they do they induce apoptosis so the caspase are involved with apoptosis okay in apoptosis there are extrinsic pathway and intrinsic pathway look at this picture okay so there are intrinsic pathway and extrinsic pathway when it comes to extrinsic pathway the key word you people have to remember is this fad fas associated death domain and fas they are tumor necrosis factor receptor family okay so these activate the caspase 8 and 10 okay 8 or 10 okay 10 in human beings okay in human beings they ask it is 10 see the intrinsic pathway intrinsic pathway the key word you have to remember is apaf1 and cytochrome c okay what is apaf it is apoptotic protease activating factor okay and cytochrome c cytosol cytochrome chrome c it activate the caspase 9 these both activate the final effector caspase 3 and 7 then apoptosis happens okay so see this notes uh, i have written the important features of apoptosis apoptosis is a programmed cell death okay the critical organelle for apoptosis is mitochondria and the key features are no inflammation cell shrinkage apoptotic bodies cyto plasmic blebs and chromatin condensation annexin 5 is the stain used okay in gel electrophoresis step ladder pattern you can see okay there are anti apoptotic and pro apoptotic genes anti apoptotic are stopping the apoptosis okay in pro apoptotic induces the apoptosis okay anti apoptotic are bcl2 bcl xl very important and mcl1 pro apoptotic genes are bax and bac okay bax and bac these are the signals are bad bim bid okay an extrinsic pathway the key factor which you have to remember is fas ligand fas associated death domain okay when they ask for a marker it is cd95 okay what it is cd95 pro caspase 8 and 10 in humans intrinsic pathway the key factor you have to remember is cytochrome c and apaf1 okay apaf is apoptotic protease activating factor and it is caspase 9 here final effector caspase is 3 and 7 so the answer here is caspase 10 in human being it is caspase 10 okay <coughs> second question both hyperplasia and hypertrophy is found in okay this hyperplasia and hypertrophy are basically cellular adaptations okay cellular adaptations to stress are hyperplasia hypertrophy atrophy metaplasia dysplasia okay there are particular examples for each of these things okay a classic example for both hyperplasia and hypertrophy is pregnancy uterus okay cardiac muscle in cardiomegaly is hypertrophy pathological skeletal muscle in athletes hypertrophy physiologic breast development in puberty is hyperplasia in lactation it is hypertrophy okay look at this <coughs> notes breast at puberty is hyperplasia breast during lactation it is hypertrophy uterus during pregnancy a classic example for hyperplasia plus hypertrophy liver cells after partial resection it goes for hyperplasia skeletal muscle fibers in body builders or athletes it is hypertrophy cardiomegaly hypertrophy prostate in old age hyperplasia post pregnancy uterus thyroid thy, uh, thyroglossal duct these all undergo physiologic atrophy okay bronchus in chronic smokers from pseudo stratified columnar ciliated epithelium it may go for squamous metaplasia in chronic smokers okay these are the very important examples that you have to remember so come to the next question the following are associated with obesity except 
okay so it is option of exclusion so you know marasmus okay marasmus is a protein allergy malnutrition which is characterized by weight loss okay this hypertension atherosclerosis you can see n number of articles which is related with obesity okay maybe bit confusing is hyperinsulinemia okay insulin is a anabolic hormone right okay which prevents which prevents lipid lysis lysis of lipid or protein catabolism it prevents it okay so if there is an hyperinsulinemia there will be a less lipolysis and protein catabolism so that may be associated with obesity okay so come to the next question edema in nephrotic syndrome is due to <clears throat> so the answer options are reduced plasma oncotic pressure increased hydrostatic pressure sodium and water retention all of the above so look at this notes the causes of causes of edema are mainly because of increased hydrostatic pressure or decreased plasma oncotic pressure this hydrostatic pressure capillary hydrostatic pressure is a outward driving force okay plasma oncotic pressure is a inward force okay whenever there is a decreased oncotic pressure okay the inward force is decreased okay so mainly the oncotic pressure is due to plasma proteins mainly albumin okay it will be decreased in liver cirrhosis or malnutrition protein losing enteropathy and also the nephrotic syndrome as like protein losing enteropathy and these all causes a decreased plasma oncotic pressure and in result of the fluid will shift to the tissue spaces from the intravascular spaces and there will be a reduced renal perfusion and there will be a increased ras what is ras it is renin angiotensin aldosterone activity will be increased okay and these causes a sodium retention okay and this explains you know and uh, other causes of edema are lymphatic obstruction and increased capillary permeability as an in inflammation and all okay so mainly the related to question they have asked edema due to nephrotic syndrome okay and the answer may be right the decreased plasma oncotic pressure secondarily there will be an increased sodium retention and now look at this slide okay so here there will be marked proteinuria okay so in nephrotic syndrome there will be a marked proteinuria will be there hypoalbuminemia will be there because of that you know hypertension hypercoagulability and it results in edema and because of hypoalbuminemia there will be a reduced oncotic pressure and the circulatory volume will be reduced secondarily sodium and water retention okay so in uh, nowadays you know it is believed that primary itself there is a primarily there will be a sodium and water retention may be the primary cause for edema and nephrotic syndrome so the answer may be here is reduced plasma oncotic pressure or sodium and water retention the option is yours my dear students okay and one more thing you know certain uh, mcqs they may confuse you like sodium and water restriction if they give restriction you have to go for answer reduced plasma oncotic pressure okay it is always retention not restriction and total number of criteria used for hla matching or okay what are hla human leukocyte antigen they are genes in major histocompatibility complex okay they help for coding of proteins that differentiate between self and non self okay they code for protein that differentiate between our self and non self okay this hla matching or hla typing okay so it is done for transplantations okay when we are going for stem stem cell transplantations and all we go for hla matching or typing okay this hla is present in short term of chromosome 6 that 6 should not be confused here with the criteria okay the criteria here is a 10 okay in most of the transplantation center they use the criteria 10 okay what are these 
okay see they they are a b c d r and dq they are the high expressive loci found on the hla at least these things you know there are two alleles of all, each of these okay these things should be matched with the donor to avoid for rejections in transplantation okay they are hla criteria okay they are used for matching or typing and next question collagen present in cornea majorly it is type 1 some students ask it may be of type 4 how it can be type 1 it is majorly type 1 look at this uh, tabular column which is very important type 1 collagen is present in bone skin dentin cornea and gingiva okay very important you have to remember is bone dentin cornea and gingiva okay type 2 you have to remember cartilaginous tissue type 3 mainly in healing wounds okay healing wounds or granulation tissue and all type 4 is in basement membrane okay so look at this thing a corneal stroma mainly contains type 1 collagen it's 75% okay according to the weightage you have to go for type 1 collagen okay the basement membrane contain type 4 collagen decement membrane decement membrane is also a basement membrane in cornea below the endothelium okay it is type 4 collagen okay but majorly it is type 1 collagen okay when it is asked for basement membrane it is type 4 okay next question nodes of rovir are first found in okay what are nodes of rovir okay there are nodes which are called lateral retropharyngeal lymph nodes which lies between the carotid artery and the prevertebral muscle okay in that the uppermost positioning node what is it the uppermost positioning node anterior to the vertebra atlas okay so atlas is c1 right uppermost positioning node anterior to the atlas are called nodes of rovir it is usually involved in carcinoma of nasopharynx okay it is usually involved in carcinoma of nasopharynx okay you could see here the nodes retropharyngeal node between the carotid sheath and the prevertebral muscles okay it is usually involved in carcinoma of nasopharynx in the radiograph you can see an enlarged node okay which virus causes hepatocellular carcinoma straightforward it is hepatitis b and question number 9 antigen presenting cells are okay there may be multiple options okay in certain questions in app there may be multiple options so don't worry okay it is langergan cell macrophage and b lymphocytes all are antigen presenting cells okay mainly the langergan cells okay so look at this diagram <clears throat> dendritic cell macrophage b cell all are antigen presenting cells okay so what are these antigen presenting cells it takes the antigen and process it okay and present to the t cell okay and these antigen presenting cells express class 2 mhc okay look at this thing okay this is in this notes you can see professional apc and non professional antigen presenting cells the professional antigen presenting cells express mhc2 these are the main professional antigen presenting cells dendritic b cell and macrophage and non professional or endothelial cell fibroblast thymic epithelial cell glial cell and pancreatic cells okay these non professional express mhc1 and professional express mhc2 okay this helper t cells right helper t cells these present these antigen presenting cells present the antigen to the t cells right these helper t cells only binds to the antigen present on the class 2 presented with class 2 okay so they called as class 2 mhc restriction okay and this is class 1 cytotoxic t cells binds to the antigen presented with mhc1 it is mhc1 restriction coming to the last question misfolded protein causes again it's an app questions there may be multiple option also in certain questions don't worry misfolded protein causes all of these diseases okay basically the misfolded protein causes neurodegenerative diseases cystic fibrosis parkinson alzheimer's cruz Crutzfeld Jacob syndrome and one more thing you have to remember is Hutchinson disease and prion disease all are misfolded protein diseases. Okay my dear students 
Thank you. Thanks for listening.